This lesson is for 3.3b. Again, I wouldn't watch 3.3b until you watch 3.3a, or at least understand 3.3a. Um, slope is what we're talking about here. It's the measure of change in y compared to x. I don't get all caught up in the words. It's an easier way to do it. Uh, an easy way to write slope is delta y over delta x. That's what you call this triangle symbol. And the triangle symbol pretty much means change in. So you're looking at the change in the value of y and it's compared to the change of the value of x. Uh, we'll start with the level of slope that requires the most work. That way you have more time to practice and understand it. Otherwise, since we are getting ready for a test, we learn the easy stuff and then you have less time to learn the uh, tougher process. Best way to do is to memorize the steps and make them instinct. So if I were you, I'd get a piece of paper out and just kind of write these things down. You don't need to write a perfect table. I would just draw a line down and then two lines going across and that should do it. But um, if you're talking about slope here, all you literally have to do is, again, this is your Y's. And so it's more of a uh, practiced thing. And so therefore you're going to do 22 minus 10. Put that on top of the fraction because that's my Y's. Remember it's delta Y over 8 minus 5. So 22 minus 10 over 8 minus 5. Once you do that, 22 minus 10 is 12, 8 minus 5 is 3. You divide those two and your final answer is 4. Again, it's a very straightforward process. All you have to do is make sure you practice it well enough to memorize that it's literally do this part first, minus on top, and then subtract this minus that on bottom, and everything else is good. Same thing here, 9, if you have this table here, 9, 13, 11, 33, First thing you're going to do is start on the y side, because remember y goes on top, and it's 33 minus 13 over 11 minus 9. 33 minus 13 is 20, 11 minus 9 is 2, 20 divided by 2 is 10, that is the slope of this table. So again, it's more of a muscle memory type thing, but you have to put the time in to do it. So that's why I said you might want to have paper to at least write it down a few times, because you're not going to remember something you're just watching as much as something you're watching and trying out on your own. For example, right now, actually trying it out for yourself would help. But um, here again, if you want the slope, it's y minus y. So it's x or so 11 minus 4. Put that over 3 minus 2, which turns out to be 7 over 1. And 7 divided by 1 is 7. So again, the work itself is pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. You just got to make sure you understand um, how it works more than anything else. This one here, again, if you want to try it out, pause the video before I start on each of these. Um, here you start with 15 minus 5, and then you go over here and do 35 minus 30. 15 minus 5 is 10, 35 minus 30 is 5, 10 divided by 5 is 2. That is your answer. So again, it's a very straightforward thing. Just make sure, again, you're doing something to try to remember it because otherwise you won't get it right on a test because it's hard to do if you haven't practiced it. Don't forget here, again, another table. You would start out with 31 minus 10. And then you come over here and do 10 minus 7. 31 minus 10 is 21. 10 minus 7 is 3. 21 divided by 3 is 7. That's it. Now, whether you're doing these numbers here because you're not good with numbers or might not be as good with numbers as you want to be, as long as you have a calculator, which you can use in class, you should be okay. As long as you know how to start this part, you're literally just taking 31 minus 10, leaving it on top, 10 minus 7, leave it on the bottom, and then divide the 2. And here, we would do 35 minus 15. On the bottom, we would do 7 minus 5. 35 minus 15 is 20. 7 minus 5 is 2. 20 divided by 2 is 10. That's all. So again, it's a very straightforward thing. Uh, there are a couple of tough spots when finding slope in this method. Uh, we're going to look at the first part today and work with the other one in, one in our upcoming practice. So um, the tough spot for today, though, is how do we convert two points into a table? So typically on the problems you're going to see, you're not going to be given a table. You're going to be given two points. And so when you're given two points, how do you turn that into a table so you can do the process of this minus that over this minus that? Well, it's easy enough. It's x comma y, which is as we've worked with tables, is an ordered pair. So you literally just take this one and just slide it into the top section. And you take your other one and slide it into the bottom section. It doesn't even matter what order you do it, but now you have a table based off of that. So again, all you would have to do is take this ordered pair and copy it to the top row. Take this ordered pair, which is x and y, and copy it to the bottom row. And then, of course, you do 12 minus 3 
8 minus 5 and finish it off. So if you're asked to find the slope of the line that goes between two points, the word slope means we're going to do the process, but we don't have a table. So what I would do is, again, just draw a real quick table. It doesn't need to be perfect. Again, a line going this way, two lines going that way is enough. Then all you do is take this first ordered pair and, again, copy it to the top row. Take your second ordered pair, copy it to the bottom row. Now you have your work, and we'll do 47 minus 17 on top. We'll do 10 minus 4 on the bottom. 47 minus 17, 30. 10 minus 4, 6. 30 divided by 6, 5. So again, once you get to the table, it's easy. You just got to make sure you know how to convert the point to a table. And all you're doing literally is just copying the ordered pairs and stacking them up in the table. Again, if you want 7, 15, and 10, 30, you want the slope of the line that goes through them. Again, slope meaning I do the process of finding out how y compares to x. So I make my table. I copy 715 on the top row because that's my first point. So 715 goes there. I copy 1030, which is my second point down here. And then I do the work. 30 minus 15. 10 minus 7. That's 15 over 3, which is 5. Again, I'm not worried about the arithmetic. Just make sure you know how to set the numbers up right. If you don't put the numbers in the proper order, there's no way for you to get it right. So that's why the practice is making sure you understand how to do it with the table. 10, 6, and 18, 30. Again, what you do is make your table. Copy 10, 6 over here. Copy 18, 30 here. And then do the work. 30 minus 6 on top. 18 minus 10 on the bottom. 30 minus 6 is 24, 18 minus 10 is 8, 24 divided by 8 is 3. Doesn't matter how big the numbers get, again, as long as you follow the process, you should be good. Here, we're going to again take the table and copy 53 into the first two spots. Take 55, 63, copy it into the next two spots, and do the work. 63 minus 3 on top, 55 minus 50 on the bottom. 63 minus 3 is 60, 55 minus 50 is 5, 60 divided by 5 is 12. Again, it's very basic, very straightforward. Just make sure you're seeing this because, again, if you're not at school, then when you come back, it's, it's expected that you understand this. So just make sure you're trying your best to understand it because, again, when you come back, especially if you miss the day of the test, you'll be taking the test whenever we see you. So just make sure you're ready. There is no worksheet for you, um, but like I said, just make sure, again, that you understand what's going on in class. We did a worksheet and got some review, but again, if you want that worksheet, shoot me an email. So go to that Canvas page, click the email me button, and send me an email pretty much asking for the worksheet, and I'll send you a copy of it, and you can work on it and do all that from there. But outside of that, again, just make sure that you are uh, doing what you're supposed to do in terms of staying prepared for what's going on. Talk to you later, and have a good day.